I'm Shannon Kniff, and welcome to Poudre School District's Living History. I attend Olander Elementary and, and am today's host for a visit with Lenita Prophet and Evelyn Chout to learn more about the people for whom schools have been named. How did you feel when a school is named after you? Well, when I heard it, someone called me that evening and said, the school is being named right now. Oh, they're naming it for you and Lee. And I said, I don't believe it. That was a total disbelief. Well, we visited a little bit and hung up and another friend called and she said, they've named the school for you and Lee. And I said, I still don't believe it. That has happened so many times. All schools named in the district, we were always up. And I just couldn't believe it. The next morning I woke up and the first thing I heard in the radio was that the school had been named for us. I still didn't believe it. I thought it must be a dream. This has really been a dream. So I picked up the paper and I had to pinch myself to realize that it had really happened. I still have times when I don't believe it and today I guess is one of those. <laughs> Why do you think you were chosen for the honor? Well, I think probably the number of years Lena and I both had 41 years in Poudre School District, and we also had some years outside of the district. And I think the letters that were written that are in the scrapbook that I brought with me this morning, and also our love and respect for children, our contributions to the school district, and our positive aspect about public education. Do you visit the school? I do visit it whenever I have time or when I am invited to go to the programs. I do go to the school and walk through and see the projects children are doing, probably every other week. And I read to the children quite, in fact, tomorrow I'm going to be out there reading for Read Aloud Day to third grade and kindergarten children. Wow. Um, were children different when you were teaching? Definitely different. <laughs> I don't know. They, they just seemed to be younger. <clears throat> they didn't grow up as fast. I taught first grade most of the time, and those children just seemed like they were little children, and now first graders seem not so mature. <laughs> so what are, your, what are your memories of Fort Collins? My memories of Fort Collins are a lot of them. And when I was just a little girl, I wanted to be a dietitian. So when I graduated from high school, I entered CSU as definitely a dietitian. I stayed with my sister, Lena, and had a scholarship because that was the only way we could go to school was by working our way through school. In my second year, about April, maybe it was May, the professor came into our class and said, all of you that are going to be dietitians, we're not going to be able to place you in two years. So some of you'd better start thinking about another profession or change your way. So I went home and I said to Lena, I don't know what I'm going to do. She said, I have the answer. I just heard today that there's going to be an opening in first grade out at Laporte, which was not part of Poudre School District at that time. It was a district of his own. She said, I'm taking you out to the president of the school board and you're going to get that job. I had no experience. I didn't have any education for elementary. But she assured me I could do it. Well, I went out to the school board. He said, oh, no, we don't have an opening. Our uh, positions are all filled for the year, but you can go see the superintendent. So Lena took me to the superintendent. I heard the same thing. But as I was ready to leave, he said, wait a minute. I'm going to take your name and telephone number in case something comes up. Three days later, guess what? I had a position at Laporte teaching first grade. <laughs> so he said I had to have a teaching certificate. So I spent the summer doing my student teaching at the training school at UNC and took two classes, a math class and a manuscript writing class. I did get my certificate through the help of my sis one other sister who was at the State Department in Denver and she told me what I needed to do to get a temporary certificate. I started the year teaching first grade children who had had no kindergarten, no school experience, and the first day I had 38 children in my class. During the year, 39 and 40 weren't uncommon. I was in a mobile unit, a small mobile unit. One day the superintendent came in and said, I have a new student. 
I said, I'd love to have her, but I don't have a desk or anywhere to put her. He said, well, there's a bay window. Let her sit the bay window today. <laughs> that was student 40. The next day, one student moved, and I had 39. I don't know what those children learned that year, but I sure worked hard at it. <laughs> During the summer that summer, I was going to summer school, and when I got home, I had a fall call from Dr. Lesher, who also a school has been named for. He said, if you can get released from Laporte, I have a teaching position for you in third grade in Fort Collins. Hadn't even applied for anything. So I went out to the school board member again. <laughs> I think he was tired of seeing me. And he said, oh no, I'm not sure we can release you. So I went to the superintendent. He said, well, we'll think about that. We'll talk it over. So a week or two passed, and Dr. Lesher called me again. He said, have you gotten that release from the school? I said, no, they're thinking about it. He said, you go out there and you pressure them to get that release. I can't hold the opening much longer. So I went out, and reluctantly they released me, and I came into Fort Collins School. I went to Putnam School. That was my first teaching in Poudre School District. Do you want to hear about all my experiences of going through <laughs> as my first years of teaching? That would be great. Well, I started at Putnam, and I think it's pretty interesting to know that there are seven teachers that taught at Putnam School who have schools named for them now. Miss Bennett was a kindergarten teacher. Anna Tavalli was a fifth grade. Margaret O'Day was our principal. Mr. Putnam was the custodian. Uh, Anna Tavelli was fifth, I named that. Um, Miss O'Day, principal. And my sister had taught fourth grade there, and I went in as first grade teacher. So you see, we started that building with a lot of history. I was there for a year, and oh, I made a mistake. I think I started at Laurel School for first grade. For third grade, I came in as third grade teacher at Laurel School. And in the middle of the year, Dr. Lesher said, our first grade teacher is leaving, so will you take the first grade? I can hire a third grade teacher. So in the middle of the year, I moved to first grade. Well, the next year, when school started, there weren't enough children for two teachers. So they said, OK, you come to school every day, be in the classroom, and we'll see what we can do. You are under contract. I sat in an empty classroom for almost two weeks. And on Thursday afternoon, they came and started moving furniture out, and they said, we're moving you to Remington. That's when I went to Remington. Well, after two years, two weeks of the teacher having the children, she pretty well knew who the troublemakers were, who the smart children were, <laughs> and you know what kind of a class I had that year. But I finished the year, and it was, went real well. The following year, about December, the school board decided they didn't want any more temporary teachers. So they suggested that I go to take a leave of absence and go to UNC and finish up. Well, I went to UNC. I had 40 hours left. And in two quarters, I finished my de for my degree. I almost killed myself. But one day when I was, got back to the dorm, I stayed in the dorm taking that many hours. I couldn't do anything else. When I got back to the dorm, I was a note in my box that I was to go and see someone. I thought, oh dear, what did I do? I knew I was passing all my courses. So at 1 o'clock, I went in, and they had offered me a job of being supervising teacher at the training school. That was really a surprise. I almost didn't come back to Fort Collins. <laughs> but as I talked to my sister, I called her, and I said, what should I do? She said, do you really want to be a college professor? I thought, no, I really don't. So after the next year, I came back to Poudre School District, and it has been wonderful ever since. It was a hard beginning, but it really has paid off. It's been a wonderful district to work in. Did you guys bring stuff to share or anything? Well, I brought one picture. You asked about the clothes we wore, wore yeah. and things. And here is one picture. This is the sixth, fourth, and third grades in the Harmony School, the old, old Harmony School. Here I am up on the top roll. <laughs> mm -hmm.
and runs the, the boy's hair do that we have here. I think this boy and this boy and this boy all had the same hairstylist. <laughs> what about your father? My father? Yeah. Well, he was never a teacher, but anything that was education, he was for it. And he worked hard at it. He was on the Harmony School Board for 25 years. And uh, he finally decided that was enough and he would retire from the school board. And two years later, the uh, current st school board called him and asked him if he would please come back and help them get things straightened out. So he went back and made peace among them. <laughs> and uh, he stayed with them for two years. By that time, they seemed to be going on a pretty steady level there. But he was um, anything for education. In fact, anything that, was, that would make life better for anybody, he was right there to help. He was a wonderful man. And uh, he, uh, and when uh, they called my brother and told him that the school had been named for the Preston family, he was as surprised as he could be. He was, really wanted it to be done. And we all did, but we hadn't pushed anybody or done any campaigning or anything. And uh, they called him at 10 o'clock at night and told him that the school had been named. And he said he was so surprised, he almost fell out of bed. <laughs> and the first thing the next morning, he called me and told me that the school had been named. And I was very, very excited about it and uh, proud because it was for named for my father because he was really a, a civil, civic-minded person. And education was something that we, never, we didn't know that there was anything to do after we got through uh, uh, high school except to go to college. We thought that was the only thing there was, and that's what we did. <laughs> so, uh, and then um, I taught school my first year of teaching. Well, after uh, we went to, I went to Colorado Women's College and then I transferred to the University of Denver, where I got my degree. And then my first year of teaching was in the Timnath High School. And it was the first year uh, after the old school had burned. The Timnath School burned completely. And um, my first class <laughs> I had was in the garage. They had the school scattered all over town. Everywhere there was a vacant building or a vacant place, they had a class. And uh, in the garage, there were two classes going on at the same time with a curtain between us. And that was my first year, and that was a seventh grade English class. <laughs>